Hi, Gene Burnett here from GeneBurnett.com. We're going to be doing a little uh, pushing hands today. And um, before we start uh, with some of the variations that we do, um, I just want to talk a little bit about my general philosophy of Tai Chi. Um, uh, whenever we do an exercise, whether it's a solo movement or a partner movement, I like to start with what I call the bone level. And the bone level of anything to me is just the basic structure, the posture of the situation that you're in, where your weight is, which foot is forward, which foot is back. It's all about posture and alignment. Um, when we have the bone level of an exercise down, like a Tai Chi movement that looks you know, correct, then we can go to muscle level, which is to relax that movement to have it be nice and soft and smooth and flowing and even. Whatever the movement is, it's just going to be even. Um, the energy level or the joint level is next where you start to connect the solid upright bones with those soft, relaxed muscles. And we do that through the joints, by suspending the joints. So where the, where the bone level is like a collection of sticks and the muscle level is like a collection of ropes, uh, the energy level is a collection of snakes. It's like ropes with life in them. So that's where you start to think about the application of what you're doing, your intent, what your whole body's doing. Uh, the spirit level of this is just when you're one with what you're doing, which just comes and goes uh, of, of its own accord. I don't really um, <clears throat> teach that level. It just sort of happens. So that's a brief overview. So when it comes to pushing hands, um, the basic game of pushing hands is to stand opposite another person, and you push each other and, and try to upset each other's balance. Um, in the uh, tournament style, uh, the whole goal is to um, make the other person move their feet. If he moves his foot, I get a point. Um, this is not a method of training that I like very much. Every once in a while as a little brief training game, okay. But to spend hours and hours and hours training to not move your feet. So he's pushing on me, and I'm trying to not move my feet. And no matter what he does, I'm trying to not move my feet. Not moving my feet is a very low priority in real life, whether it's in metaphorically and just in daily life or whether it's in an actual fight. If I could train to have you not move your feet, that would be useful to me. Like if I could get him to not move his feet and do something, that would be great. But to not move my feet rarely comes in handy in life. I'm not going to move one inch. That's, that's, that's a rare position in life. Usually when you stand your ground, it's helpful to have a little slack. So if he gives me a big shove, bigger. Good, more impact. There. That's standing my ground, right? Not this. <laughs> you know, like fighting for my feet. You know, if I shove him and he, and he does that, that's standing his ground. He's still here. If we're, unless, we're, unless we're on the edge of a cliff, that's fine. If you're on the edge of a cliff, okay, suddenly that training comes in handy. But like, how often does that happen? <laughs> um, so rather than trying to offset each other's balance by just claiming we move the other guy's foot, we're going to say, you know when your balance has been upset, and when it's been upset and you've lost your balance, you know it. So that's what we're going on. We're going by the honor system here. So if we're working out and pushing and he gives me a push, that's a little slippery out here today, but if he gave me a push, I mean, he moved me, but I didn't really lose my balance, and I know it. He just got me to move. If he gives me another push and I, uh, see there I lost my balance. Do it slowly. If we're pushing and working out and he moves me and I'm, ugh, you know, I, it's very obvious that I've lost my balance. So, um, when when you've lost your balance in this game, um, you know it, and you let your partner know, oh, good one, you got me, right? So, uh, one thing we can do when we're doing push hands practice is we can set each other up matching like this, and we can do bone level pushing, which means we're all about structure and about who can get underneath who. It's like we're little tractors trying to, trying to get each other balance that way, good one. Or we can soften and go to muscle level where we're trying to do a sneakier push, one that works on alignment, one that works on the right angle, or like he'll get me in a funny flow like that, you know. He's not trying to just overpower me, he's trying to find a crack in my structure that he can exploit and make me move. Um, if we go to the energy level and the joint level of this, we might be going even slighter, so trying to move each other with even less energy. So that we're looking, he, he's like, if I did a big push here and he just pushed me a little bit there and I went, oh. see, that would be a nice, easy push for him and I did most of the work, right? So the spirit level of push hands just happens when it does. Every once in a while you just do the perfect thing and they go flying and you hardly do anything. But that's pretty rare. Um, 
most of the time we work on these other levels. We're working on bone level to connect to our skeletal structure, or we're working on soft muscle level to relax our bone or our, our muscles, or we're working on energy level to be very, very soft and very, very sneaky. Um, in the game of push hands as I play it, you learn those levels just to get a taste of each one, and then you put it on kind of a dimmer switch so that you, you can go to any level that you can. So we're, we're working out. If he gives me a push, I might just go to bone level and ground that push into my body and then give him a push back. Or he might give me a push and I might soft and go to here and then do something even more minimal. Um, so you kind of dial in the amount of force that you need in order to preserve your balance and upset the other persons. Um, you have it on kind of a kind of a dimmer. Um, that way, um, you're aiming for using as little force as possible, but you're not restricting yourself and setting the bar so high that you're trying to use no force at all all the time. That's just very very difficult to do in anything approaching real time. So when we play the game, we're going to be trying to upset each other's balance and um, we're willing to use whatever level we need in order to do that. From, from bone level, fairly forceful, to muscle level, medium force, to energy level, really, really light force, to spirit level, no force. Whatever happens, happens. But the game then is to do that. So we set ourselves up and we start pushing. We're going to see, see our feet are moving all over the place. But we're working on balance. Trying to see what. We're working our knees a little bit here. Right? So you do all kinds of fun stuff like that. Now we're just going to do a few variations of this basic game. I should say too that, you know, um, uh, leading up to this free hands pushing that we're doing, all kinds of exercises that you see people doing all the time in push hands, you know, basic, basic repertoire of movements, these are, you know, uh, these are exercises, you know, so in some clubs they don't do any more than this kind of thing. Um, if, if, uh, if you train with me, we do this kind of thing for a while and then we gradually move into more, um, more free hands, more where we're, you know, just doing this. So in the free hands game, again, we're not trying to move each other's feet. We're trying to actually tip their balance so that they know it. They feel, like, ooh, my balance is off. Um, and one way we can do this really cooperatively and help each other get better, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to do free hands and see who gets who first, okay? So we'll just, just do that. It's kind of mutual. <laughs> Okay, so you see what I did there? Um, I just got on the inside, I saw a moment, and I just went right into the center. He gave me a little brief opening and I took advantage of it. So what we do when we do that is um, we repeat that situation a little bit to enable Neil to see my setup moves and to close that door before I get there. So we'll do the same thing. I'll come inside and then there. But usually what I'll do is I'll say, Neil, let me do it a couple times. So he lets me repeat the technique that worked on him. And then, he's noticing my setup moves, hopefully, so then when I go to do it, there, now that door's closed. I can't get in that center door so easily anymore. So now, in order for me to do it, <laughs> I've got to be a little sneakier. So, and then he has to be better. So if, if I get him and then help him close the door, I have to be better to get in that door the next time. So we can cooperate with each other, help each other get better. So when you're doing this, say you're practicing and working with your partner like this, when they get you, oh, nice, repeat that. And just let him repeat it a couple times. Just let him do it so that you can see, oh, what does he do to, let, to give away that that's what he's about to do? And then you can short circuit it, right? So great cooperative way to do this. So often this is done competitively and it's all about besting the other person and and, uh, you know, people don't get better that way when they keep all these secrets. If they share this stuff with each other and practice in a cooperative way, you both just get better and better and better. And then you push with someone else who hasn't done all that work, and you might find that, um, boy, you really have an advantage. Um, 
another thing we can do, one of the criticisms of pushing hands is that every time, like say he gets me, boom, okay, we reset. Oh, got your balance, okay, we reset. So it's just a series of single, we're probing and listening, and then all of a sudden, oh, one little movement, and then it's over. But, but really, the whole point of this is to steal the other person's balance, not to overpower them, but to steal it in a, in a way that I hardly even notice it's been stolen until it's too late. So the idea with this uh, way of doing it, which I call follow-through push hands, is that once you've got their balance, you keep on them. You keep on them. On, if, if you're on grass or at the beach, you can do it until they're right on the ground. But um, here we're on concrete. But what he'll do this in slow motion is like if he gets my balance, he's going to keep on them until I regain it, and then we go back again. So he's going to keep on it until it's until I get my equilibrium back. So here he keeps working on that. So that's kind of a nice way to make it more of an ongoing conversation than a series of gotchas, gotchas. So it's like if I get him. I want to. I want to stay on it. Stay on it until until we've reestablished some kind of equilibrium. It gets you used to the idea of this is continuing, continuing until I can get myself myself centered again. Um, we also call that um, sometimes call that Tony Joss style because <laughs> Tony is so relentless and so focused on the uh, on the opponent until the very last second. So instead of letting him off the hook. You do not let him off the hook. You Tony jot him right into the way. And on my part, defensively, I work on regaining my balance while dealing with him. So it's a nice, a nice trade-off that way. So these are just a few different ways to play with, with pushing hands. Uh, to think of it in terms of bone level, where you're trying to, you know, move their structure with your structure. It's like having a big gun. You just go. Um, the downside to staying at that is that you're always tense, you're always using muscles, you're always using force to just overpower the other guy. Um, so you do muscle level to be soft and relaxed and moving there, but you know, it's so soft, it's so relaxed, it's so kind of heavy, um, that if you stay there, you won't get very refined, and also people can take advantage of you. If you get stuck in it, um, you won't be able to really stand your ground, so you want to be able to go to that bone level if you need to and then go to that muscle level for softness and relaxation. And then the joint level is where everything really gets slippery and slinky in all your joints. And that's where it starts to become really interesting, where, where you really are tuned into the uh, intent and the momentum and physics of that other person and doing just the right amount of, uh, of work to, to upset their, uh, their balance or to get to them. So that's, that's, that's harder. So we dial it in. We go from bone to muscle to energy to muscle to energy to bone and back and forth. And, as we try to figure each other out. So we're just trying to figure out what, what is this person over here? What have they got going? <laughs> it can be done kind of rough like this, or it could be done really gentle and soft and relaxed. And, you know, we can, we can be really nice with each other. Or we can start throwing elbows in there a little bit, or we can start closing our hands, doing it like, you know, so that we've got a little, a little something a little rougher, a little closer. I don't really train for combat or hardcore fighting, but I do like this stuff. It's good in everyday life to feel like you can get jostled around a little bit and not feel like you're just going to keel over or cave in. And it's good to learn how to keep your balance when it's being challenged, because. Lord knows life and other people and the world are challenging our balance all the time. It's just some, some, ways, some ways to practice this that might be fun. Thanks.